Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Awesome. Good. Good morning. Thanks for joining me this morning. I'm so glad I have people on Zoom. I've been doing this live on Facebook too for those who can't uh, figure out Zoom or just want to watch through Facebook. <laughs> but it's always good to see you guys. So how how are you? How was your weekend? <clears throat> All good. good. <laughs> awesome. All right. Are we ready to dig into some mojo today? Yes, please. All right. Awesome. So I really appreciate you guys being here. As I said, I, I love this group. It gives me a lot of uh, joy and purpose to think about ways to inspire you and and touch you and motivate you and encourage you to uh, look at yourselves, your life, your goals, your opportunities, and you know, get your mojo back for some of you, maybe uh, expand it. And mojo is energy, really. That's what the, the phrase really means. Um, historically, years and years and years ago, probably centuries ago, it referred to magic. Um, so I love that because there's magic within all of us to create the life that we want. So that is, uh, that is the meaning of mojo. So we're gonna dig into that today. And um, I encourage you to take notes. You may want to write this stuff down. You may want to take it to another level and do some of the activities that I suggest at the end. And um, we're going to talk about your favorite subject, you. We're going to talk about you today. So let's, um, let's start out with this is our mantra for the week. Are you ready? Let me just get to my screen. Okay, this is our mantra for the week. I am not everyone's cup of tea and I'm cool with that. That's right, so in today's uh, Monday Morning Mojo, I just wanna talk to you about how it's okay not to fit in. It's okay uh, if everyone doesn't necessarily connect with you or even like you, it's really okay um, and it, it's definitely um, our goal to be likable. It's our goal to be positive. However, it's really not about trying to please everyone and be accepted by everyone for their approval, right? So it is time to stop seeking other people's approval. And we all do it in one form or another. And we're going to look into that today. We, we're all seeking approval one way or another. So we're going to talk about learning how to let go and um, really let go the, of the need to impress others and gain their approval or validation. Does anyone hear me this morning? Is this something that you've struggled with at one time or another? Yes? So, I mean, even when we were kids, right? I'm sure that we have had those moments. And I think learning to let go of the need to impress other people and letting go of the desire to be a people pleaser is probably one of the most freeing things you can do for yourself. And really, again, one of those um, crucial stepping stones to, to really, uh, for your journey on personal development, right? So really letting go of, of the need to gain others approval. I mean, really, we're all unique. And if we, um, are striving to be someone else or uh, like someone else, I should say, then we're never really connecting with our authentic self. And so this is, this is really more about awareness again. We've talked about awareness a lot. And I think, you know, as I said, we've all experienced these feelings of, of being wanted and being accepted. I mean, as human beings, we're very tribal. We, um, as human beings, really want to feel like we have a tribe, right? I mean, we see that even with this group here. Yet we wanna know that we are connecting with people who see us for who we are, who recognize our unique gifts, who appreciate our differences, and who are not asking us to conform to their point of view. And it's about knowing that we have the inner strength and the self-awareness to really feel 
like we can own our, our uniqueness and own what makes us who we are. So whether you're young or old, I think this um, can be a battle that we wage in our own mind. And it was really something that I think came to me over the weekend that I wanted to talk about because the, the world around us is full of a lot of adversity and a lot of challenges. And sometimes we can get lost in all of that. And I think this is an opportunity to get back inward into ourselves and really discover more about who we are and, and come to love that and not apologize. Don't apologize for who you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we, if we spend too much time worrying about what other people expect of us in terms of how we show up, the way we look, the way we talk, um, then I think we can um, lose sight of developing more of our own selves in terms of personal development and personal growth. And you know what? Life's way too short to be anyone other than who you were created to be. So when we spend time working on our purpose and we spend time working on our vision for our lives and developing our goals for our careers, if we're not creating that plan within the vision of who we believe we are for ourselves and we're trying to fit into um, our, our friends or coworkers vision of life, then we're missing the point. We're missing that opportunity, right? So, Again, you can't be everyone's cup of tea, nor should you try to be. Uh, rather, I think it's about focusing on what makes you happy. And happiness is an inside job. It is no one else's responsibility to make you happy. Not your spouse or partner, not your children, not your career, not your work, not your clients, not your family. Your, your happiness is all on you. And if you expect the outside world to bring happiness to you, whether it's through relationships, through material possessions, through career, um, then you'll probably be disappointed a lot. Because no one can really understand what your definition of happiness is other than yourself. And if you're waiting for the rest of the world to make you feel fulfilled or happy, um, then you're really, again, vulnerable to someone else's definition of life. And this is about taking 100% responsibility for your life and realizing that that definition is only written by you, can only be written by you, and that you can't give someone else that much power uh, because you have to claim that power for yourself. So what are the things, what are those things that make you truly happy? They'll line up with who you really are. And as you create that magnetic force in your life and you really get clear about who you are and you stand in your own power and you show up more as your authentic self, it creates this magnetic field around you. And the people who want to love you and support you and celebrate you and who want to actually learn from you and share ideas and show you that that genuine part of themselves, they'll be there. They'll come to you automatically. But when you show up trying to be someone that you're not, you know it feels weird, right? It feels kind of like you're wearing someone else's clothes. You're putting on a coat too small. And don't think we don't notice that. Like, that doesn't really connect with people either. And so then you may really seem like a phony. And so this is really your opportunity to cut away at all of that, okay? And so I don't know whether it's because I'm gonna be 49 this year, I, I don't know. Like I just feel more and more proud of who I am and not afraid to step out into whatever that light is and you know, while I want to show up as a caring person who contributes positive things to the world, if everyone doesn't like me, I'm okay with that. And I don't take things as personally as I used to. Because whether someone likes you or not, what they think about you is really none of your business. Because the moment you start to take that on, it's going to change the way you feel about yourself. It's going to change the way you feel about things going on around you. 
and happiness is your is up to you it's your mindset approval is not something that we need to live a full life approval is not something we need to live a full life now it's different than showing up and being responsible and being you know a, a caring responsible part of of the community in the world but i don't need your approval if i if i did this uh, monday morning mojo and no one showed up I'd still feel it was a good thing, right? It's not like I'm looking for your approval for this. I'm looking to see who needs one piece of information I could possibly share. It's something I enjoy doing for me as well. So what are you doing right now that brings you joy, right? And what are you not doing right now because you're afraid of someone else's reaction? or opinion or judgment what are you not doing that you really in your heart feel is meant for you because you're worried about what other people will think i love this quote from brian tracy um, the happiest people in the world are those who feel absolutely terrific about themselves and this is the natural outgrowth of accepting total responsibility for every part of your life of their life and, you know, again, I think when you have that sense of inner happiness, that's acceptance. And you have to accept who you are before you could possibly accept anyone else. And if you want to feel accepted by other people, then you have to accept yourself first, right? So I think sometimes people assume that when they have X, they'll be happy. When they get to Y, they'll be happy. When they change jobs, they'll be happy. Yet, what if you were able to get to X and have Y and change jobs and increase your life because you were happy first? What if the happiness is what brings everything else in? So happiness is acceptance, accept who you are. Start that today. I mean, every unique and wonderful part of you, your personality, the way that you're just designed uh, is is truly a beautiful thing. There is no one else like you. Two people came together and here you are, right? And if they hadn't come together, maybe at that exact moment, you might not be here. So, I mean, what a unique miracle we are in that sense. So this is your life, the only one you get. And you can spend it worrying about what other people think you can worry about what your um, friends will say if you step out into something new. You can spend time worrying about what if, or you can get clear about what you want and really claim that mojo, that energy, and really just wake up every morning saying, okay, what am I gonna do to get myself closer to that vision and goal? And know in your heart that you're always doing the very best you can in every moment. You're always enough. You are always enough. And the people who are meant to be around you will show up. And the others who can't understand it, they don't have to. It's okay. So discovering who you are, is cur is take it takes courage. So be brave enough to be yourself. Whether it's, you know, someone who's a little bit loud, someone who's funny, someone who's serious and thoughtful, whatever it is that makes you who you are, just be you. Because the world needs what you have to offer. The world is desperately looking for more, more authentic people. And as you stand in your own power and show up that way, you certainly give other people permission to do the same. Anytime we do that. You do not attract what you want, you attract what you are. So in, in really your pursuit of having the things that you want in life, it really is about knowing more about yourself first. And that attraction will bring things in because when you show up as who you are, you will attract more of like those like-minded people who want to support you. They can move you forward. You'll support uh, the journey that you're on, the goals, and, and the actions will show up in a, in a way that is almost effortless sometimes, right? Because like attracts like. That saying opposites attract 
is not really true. Like attracts like, because all attractions are based on energy, vibration, chemistry. So we're emitting a frequency all the time and vibrating and we're we're going to attract that same vibration to us so if we're critical of ourselves this is what you came here for this morning this one statement are you ready if we are critical of ourselves guess who you're attracting people who will be critical of you too your mind is going to look for more of that your energy that you're putting out into the world is is self-deprecating so you're going to attract more criticism it, it's just futile i guess i'm going to say it's just futile to work so hard to get someone else's approval when you really start to understand the law of attraction the only approval you need to seek is your own if you feel that you are in alignment with what the universe has to offer you that's when the magic happens, the mojo, right? That's when it all shows up. That's when the right people will be attracted to us, the right opportunity. People with a high frequency, people who really love life um, and value themselves are, are, are happy and they're vibrating on such a high level. And they're attracting others who are at that same level. And that synergy, right? Because we just talked about energy and that chemistry, right? That vibration. When you start attracting people into your life who are like that, it's powerful. Like amazing things happen. You, you, and, and you know, it's not even that they're going to give you ideas and direction. That energy is just going to open your own creative thought process. You're going to feel that motivation. You're going to feel that encouragement. Um, because you're responding to that positivity and you're attracting more of it into your life. So in contrast, people with low frequency or low vibration, low energy, they attract the same back, right? And so if you are in a group of people personally, professionally, uh, that or even socially on social media or even, you know, what you choose to read and watch, if you're in this low energy vibration, right? You're going to stay there and it's going to be very difficult to climb out of that until you start to change your thoughts, change your beliefs, which will shift your energy and start that attraction process. So people who are open and giving and caring and kind to themselves will attract other people who feel the same way. It's, it's impossible. Oops. It's impossible to attract the opposite by being super positive. You are, some people may find interest in you, um, and they, they may um, look at you because they know deep inside that they're seeking what you have, but it won't be sustainable. Unless they change their thought process, their beliefs, uh, and their energy, they can't sustain that. It's too much to be around that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So comparison, I just want to talk about this for a minute. Comparison is the thief of all joy. Comparison is the thief of all joy. And self-acceptance is the key to self-esteem and personal power. Self-acceptance is the key to self-esteem and personal power, which that's your mojo. So loving ourselves is confidence. Confidence is, again, not comparing yourself to other people. It's not comparing your journey, your path in life. It's not comparing your wardrobe. It's not comparing the home you live in. Um, it's, it's not comparing their kids to yours. This is your life, your journey. And our fixation on all of this, our fixation on body image, our career, comparing where we live, where we vacation, um, you know, and it's all played out on social media. We know that, right? And people can choose what they show you on social media. Some of us show up in a very authentic way. Um, and others are going to create a movie reel that makes them feel good about their life. And so it, this is the thing. If you're going to start comparing yourself to other people, you don't even know if you're comparing yourself to any form of reality. So create your own reality. I, I have to tell you, I 
I have never watched a reality TV show for more than five seconds. I, I personally just never understood it. Instead of sitting there watching someone else's life play out on TV, which you can't even say is authentic, create your own. Spend some time and energy. Get off the couch and create your own reality. And so uh, I just felt like I had to say this too. Like comparison is the thief of all joy. So, and I've been there, I've done it. And, and, and it's really, it's such a waste of energy um, because I'm, when I do that, when we do that, we're just neglecting how we want to build our own lives. So I don't know if you guys saw the other day, um, I did a, a quick live on the Facebook page and uh, there was a podcast I was listening to and a couple of things really struck me there. And, you know, the whole concept of gratitude is powerful. And we're going to do a mojo just on gratitude. Um, and I think that it's important to discuss it here quickly because the more you focus on someone else's approval, the more you focus on uh, comparing yourself to other people, the, you, you, you can't possibly feel gratitude for who you are and where you are in that space, right? And if you can't appreciate and show gratitude for what you already have, the universe is not going to bring you more, right? You're sending a message that says, I don't even like what I have. So God, the universe is prepared to provide you with this abundance, but it's going to say, ah, she's not ready. She's not even happy with what she has. So we can't, we can't bring more opportunity her way. So being grateful for whatever it is that, that makes up who you are, being grateful for your strengths, being grateful for your weaknesses, because those are opportunities, being grateful for uh, where you live and, and every part of your life is the first step in attracting in more abundance. Because to truly live your best life, you have to appreciate where you are because that's the only way you're going to go forward. So gratitude is huge. And that gratitude is a high vibration, probably the highest vibration we can experience as a human being. And so that will emit this high frequency. And that goes back to the conversation we just had about the law of attraction. So gratitude is huge. So I'm going to challenge you to create a daily habit around gratitude and literally get a notebook or a journal and create a gratitude journal and start the morning and the day, however you want to do it, with at least three to five things that you're grateful for. And we'll talk about that more in a sec. So as we wrap up this morning, remember, there's no other person on the planet like you. And that is a miracle in itself. And there is no one on the planet who came here to do what you can do. I believe we all have a divine appointment, whatever that is, whatever it is. And it's, it's unique for all of us. And so if you're wasting time worrying about what the world thinks of you, then you can't give the world what it's waiting for. So it is really the opportunity today to say the only acceptance and approval I need is my own. Uh, instead of focusing on what other people want of me, I'm going to focus on what I'm here to give and I'm going to get clear about what I need to do to grow more as a person. So as I tell you every week, if you would like to take this um, lesson uh, this conversation and really spend some time on it during the week and really make it show up in your life, then you probably want to do the action steps. So I am going to uh, give you a little, um, I don't want to call it homework, you know, because we didn't like homework as a kid, right? So we're just going to call it an action step. <laughs> all right. So here's what's next. First of all, you have to be kind to yourself. You have to develop a habit around kindness and it has to start with yourself. Um, and so what I want you to do, and here are your action steps. I would like you to schedule 30 minutes with yourself sometime in the next 24 hours where you can sit quietly and we're going to go old school, pen and paper, and you're going to give yourself an entire 30 minutes. So that means you can't stop before then. And you're just going to write down 
all the things you really admire and love about yourself. And for some of you, this is going to be challenging, and I know it. And you can't stop. And I want you to just keep writing. I don't want you to judge what comes to mind. Do not argue with yourself. If you really get into this state of gratitude and love for yourself, the, the things will come to you. When they come, don't argue with yourself. Don't say, well, that's not really true, or no, I'm not that smart. You need to own it, and whatever comes to mind is true, and it has to be positive, right? It has to be positive. We're going to stay in the positive. So for 30 minutes with pen and paper, you're going to write down all the wonderful things that you love about yourself. This is not about being egotistical. This is about self-love. I want you to write down the things that you feel are unique, the things that you feel are gifts that are positive attributes, strengths, whether it's intellectual, whether it's emotional, spiritual, how you show up as a friend, whatever it is. Then when you're done, you're gonna go over the list and I want you to circle the things that you're most proud of. And then for another 30 minutes that you're gonna schedule with yourself, you're gonna journal about those circled items and just write out why you are so proud of yourself for that. Relive some experiences when you showed up that way. Remind yourself of uh, why you are so proud of yourself for those positive attributes. I get it, this may not be easy and I'm gonna challenge you to do it. Another action step for this week is find a book. Find a book. I'll share some books on the Facebook page that you might want to check out. Um, find a book that you would love to read or listen to on Audible that will help you understand more about this journey of self-love and self-acceptance. And I'll share some ideas with you on the uh, Facebook page. And the last action step is a personal growth plan. And I'll put that on the group as well in the files. So this is where I'll share the template for the year with you. And uh, if you've never done this before, it's okay. You can start right now. It's mid-year. It's perfect. And what are the things that you want to spend time on each month? No, no more than one or two usually. Uh, that will help you grow personally into the person you need to become in order to hit your goals. So it's about doing a little research and I'll tell you doing the personal growth plan, creating that outline for an entire year. I usually set aside a whole afternoon for that. And I do it usually in November. It takes time because I research, I try to think about what my goals are for the year. What do I need to read? What do I need to learn? Um, what do I want to experience that will open myself up that will um, improve my knowledge base? And don't make it all work stuff either. You know, you want to balance some fun and some personal growth too. So for instance, if you really think that you've been running, uh, you're wound tighter than a clock and you're really dealing with a lot of, you know, anxiety and stress right now, and you want to take a class on meditation, that's a perfect thing for your personal growth plan. Or you want to take a class, um, well, I know some things may be a little different now with social distancing, right, with uh, physical distancing, but I, I, you know, I would say, like, if you wanted to take a class on, you know, cake decorating, it, it's okay. Like, those are good things to put on your personal growth plan because it's something artistic and creative that can really, you know, show up in other ways in your life. So it's a balance, right? It might be a spiritual retreat. It might be a certain vacation because of the meaning of the vacation or the experience that would be powerful. Um, and uh, it could be a book, it could be a webinar, a class, a certification. Maybe it's something that you've never learned to do and it's always stuck with you from childhood, like riding a bike. That could be on your personal growth plan as well. So that's your action plan to anchor what we talked about. And as always, those of you who are here on, on Zoom, I appreciate it because you're my little live audience, my studio audience. Um, I would love, uh, if you need to go, I get it, but I'm just going to uh, stay on with you for a few more minutes.
just would love to hear what your ahas and takeaways were from this morning. And I uh, appreciate this group being here. So was this, I, I, I expect this to be exactly what somebody needed to hear today. It always seems to work out that way. So what were your takeaways? Uh, I enjoyed the uh, the, the uh, self-critical message. I think it's easy to be self-critical today, every day, and especially with being isolated. You know, you almost hear the echo of your voice <laughs> around your house versus the, sure. the sort of the natural flow when you interact. So I appreciate that part of the message. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. Anyone else have something to share? Yes, Michelle. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, two things. So when you were talking about social media and um, projecting like your authentic self on there, I just had a funny story. One time I was out with two girlfriends, one both from high school and I hadn't seen both of them in a long time. And one of the girls said, we need to take pictures and you have to look like you're having the best time of your life. Like she staged this whole thing and we had to be like, because she was trying to get back at a guy she had broken up with. And, and it was just so mind blowing to me that, you know, and this was a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I, I thought that was funny. And the other thing is the personal growth plan. You know, it's funny. I, for work, do exactly that. Like think about the things that I need to focus on and train, et, et cetera. But you don't necessarily think about doing that for your personal self. So oh. that stuck out with me. And, and I'm excited to do this plan. Awesome, yeah, I'll put it on Facebook this morning and I'll share mine too, if anyone wants to see what I put on my personal growth plan. Definitely. And uh, it's fluid too, because um, I, I check in on it all the time because I have to know like, what did I say I was gonna do this month? <laughs> yeah. But sometimes things change and move around and, that, and that's okay. Um, because listen, if you, if you do your personal growth plan with all that intention and you have, let's say, you know, 24 different things on there and you only get to 20 of them. Was that a success? Yeah, I mean, way more than you would have done without that intention. So it's, it's, uh, it's just fluid. So good, I'll put that up there. Anybody else before we sign off and start our, the rest of our day? All right. Well, you all are awesome, unique, beautiful individuals. And I really um, trust that this was helpful to you and that you're gonna start that journey to look deeper inside and find those unique talents that you have. And I really appreciate you being here. And um, if you found this to be helpful, share it. You know, Share it with other people, share the recording, share the group. Um, there, there are so many people who are feeling um, overwhelmed and maybe without a little direction today. And if this group can help them and anything that we talk about here can provide them with tools, that's, that's the purpose. So I appreciate you sharing it and uh, appreciate you being here. And uh, thank you, Donna. It's so good to see that you're here. Um, you all have an awesome day and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Anna. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.